Hello, in this video, we will sew the Madrid pattern, available from 6 months to 4 years. This is a jumpsuit, playsuit, or dress to which you can add long sleeves. The bodice is fully lined to guarantee beautiful finishes. The design is partially buttoned, either at the front or in the back. You can also make an inseam button placket, practical for nappy changing. There is also a possible version with ruffles on the bodice, in this case the partial opening is done in the back. And finally, last option, you can choose to finish legs with a simple hem or by elasticating them. Enough to do many different versions, the Madrid pattern has been updated. If you had the old version, you will see that the assembly steps are totally different. Indeed, we preferred to enlarge the front or back opening to make the outfit dressing easier, and the partial buttoning has changed the entire assembly. The assembly at the leg bottom is also different with a new option of elasticated legs. And for autumn and winter, we also added sleeves. The skill level is intermediate. You will learn to line the bodice, to assemble a partial button placket. To assemble an inseam button placket. To assemble ruffles and elastic legs. Depending on the options chosen, the design will be more or less simple and quick to achieve. The simplest version would be the sleeveless, without inseam opening, and non elasticated legs. All the other options that may be added will increase the difficulty a bit, but the pattern still remains affordable. The Madrid pattern can be sewn in both woven and knits fabrics. In woven, we advise you soft fabrics, especially if you add long sleeves. You can use poplin, batiste, viscose, denim, corduroy, double gauze, linen, cotton lace or brodery anglaise. For knits, you can use jersey, French terry or fleece. It is also possible to mix the two, for example the knit for the bodice and sleeves, and a woven for the skirt. Finally, you will need a lining for the bodice, which you can be do in the same fabric or in a thinner contrasting fabric. You have here woven versions with viscose, light denim and double gauze. And you also have a dress version in it. In terms of supplies, you will need a thin fusible interfacing to reinforce the button plackets. You will also need buttons about 10-11mm wide. Their number varies depending on the options chosen. You can also choose snaps instead of buttons. And finally, optionally also, you will need an 1 cm wide elastic to make the elasticated legs. We will start by fusing the different pieces that need it, that is to say the bodice button placket and facing, and the front and back gusset. It is important to check your interfacing from the beginning, because it will affect the front or back buttoning for girl or boy. Please check the diagram in the guidebook first. Here I show you the interlining for a boy version, buttoned in front. It is recommended not to fuse interfacing on seam allowances to avoid unnecessary over thickness. However, some edges are even so interfaced because they have no seam allowances, like here, because once sewn they will simply be overlocked. By interlining it ensures that the fabric does not fray and the finish is really clean. I show you on a garment already sewn. Place the front and back bodice with right sides together and stitch at 7mm shoulders. For the ruffle version, stitch the bodice pieces together as well as the side pieces together. Do the same for the lining. The ruffle option will not be detailed here, but the principle is the same as for others of our patterns. You can watch the video of the pattern Hibiscus, for example, whose assembly of the ruffle is almost identical. 
I will show you the assembly for a front opening. The principle is the same for a back opening. It is simply necessary that you reverse the front and the back on the images and in the explanations. For the jumpsuit or playsuit option, place with right sides together the back bottoms and stitch at 7mm along the crotch. Overcast or overlock the edges together. If you chose the dress option, this step is not useful because the skirt was cut on the fold. We are going to gather and then assemble the bottom or skirt to the bodice. Start by stitching two parallel rows of gathering threads on the top edge of the back bottom or skirt with a long point and a low thread tension. Be careful not to stop the threads at the beginning and end of stitching. Divide the bottom or skirt into four equal parts and mark with pins. Do the same for the back outer fabric bodice. Place with right sides together the back bottom or skirt with the back bodice by matching the pins. Pull on the gathers threads, preferably the two below, until you get two pieces of the same width. Distribute the gathers regularly. Stitch at 7mm, overcast or overlock the edges together, and iron the seam towards the bodice. We will do the same now with the front pieces. Stitch two parallel rows of gathering threads. Be careful, however, there is a small variation. It is necessary to begin the gathers at 3cm of the middle to avoid a useless volume at the button placket. Divide into four equal parts and mark with pins. Do the same for the front outer fabric bodices. Place with right sides together the front bottom or skirt with the front bodices by matching the pins. I make an 8 around the pin that marks the 3 cm to block the gathers and thus be sure that the gathers start well at 3 cm. Pull on the gathers threads until you get two pieces of the same width. Distribute the gathers regularly. Stitch at 7 mm, overcast or overlock the edges together and iron the seam towards the bodice. We now go to the button placket and facing. The button placket is the part in the continuity of the bodice that receives the buttons as here, while the button facing is inside the garment and strengthen the button holes. Fold with right sides together in the length of the bodice button placket. Stitch the top at 7 mm that is to say the part where the seam allowances are not fused. Cut the corner and turn inside out. Overcast or overlock the bottom of the button placket and iron it. Now, the button facing. Overlock the long fused side and the bottom. Now we're going to assemble this button placket and facing to the bodice in outer fabric. We start by the button placket. Place with right sides together the button placket on the outer fabric bodice, along the opening. For a boy front opening, I place it on the front left side. Align the bottom of the button placket 
overlocked with the bottom or skirt notch. It's important to be really precise at this step to make sure you have a nice buttoning at the end. The top of the button placket, sewn, should be below the seam allowance of the neckline, 8 mm below the neckline. Stitch the button placket at 7 mm. Now, the button facing. Place with right sides together the long side of the button facing, not overlocked, on the outer fabric bodice, front right side for me. Align the edges at the top, not overlocked. The bottom of the facing, overlocked, must match perfectly to the bottom or skirt notch. Once again, it's important to be precise. Stitch at 7 mm. It is also at this step that we realize the importance of having followed well the scheme of interfacing, because we have to stitch the facing along its not fused side. We now pass to the assembly of the bodice lining. The bottom of the front and back lining has been overlocked or overcasted. Place with right sides together the lining on the outer fabric bodice, aligning the edges and the shoulder seams. The top of the button facing is stitched at the same time as the neckline, but not the top of the placket. For the version with sleeves, stitch at 7 mm the neckline. At the buttoning, Stitch at 7mm following the previous stitch, then overlock the middles. Cut the corners. And fold the lining in the inside of the garment. For the sleeveless version, we proceed in the same way. Place with right sides together the lining and the outer fabric bodice and stitch the neckline, the buttoning, but also the arm holes. Then overlock the middles, cut the corners, and turn inside out through the shoulders. Fold the button placket and facing with right sides together on the outside of the garment. You can pin to hold in place. Place with right sides together the front bodices aligning the notches. Stitch at 7mm the crotch for the jumpsuit slash playsuit, the middle seam for the dress, starting the stitch exactly where the button placket and facing stitches ends. It has to be precise to have a good result, and do not hesitate to redo if necessary. The stitch should not take the button placket and facing, but start exactly at their end. Also take care to keep the seam allowance 7mm everywhere so that the seams are in the same alignment. Fold the button facing on the right side of the lining, and the button placket in the continuity of the bodice. Superimpose the placket and the facing, taking care to align the assembly seam of bodice and bottom or skirt, iron and pin. Top stitch on 2 cm the bottom of the buttoning so that it fits well, and thus avoid the risk of tearing at this place. Now the side seams, I show you first for the sleeveless version. Unfold the lining to put it in the continuity of the bodice like this. Place with right sides together the sides aligning the arm hole assembly seams.
as well as bodice and bottom or skirt. Stitch at 7mm starting by the bottom or skirt, then outer fabric bodice and lining. Overcast or overlock the edges together. Fold the lining inside and top stitch it on the outside bodice side seams, stitching exactly into the seam. You will have a really invisible stitch. It is possible that the lining tends to come out a little at the neckline, so it can be held by some invisible points by hand along the assembler seam with the bottom or the skirt. On this version I only made a small point in the front middle, and the lining holds well. For the version with sleeves, the side seam is slightly different. First place the bodice and its lining with wrong sides together. Then pin with right sides together the sides by aligning the assembly seams of bodice plus bottom or skirt. Stitch at 7mm and overcast or overlock the edges together. Repeat on the other side. Pin the bodice and its lining with wrong sides together at the armholes. You can stitch the two layers together in the seam allowance to hold them together. It will then allow easier handling. Overcast or overlock the sleeve bottom. Fold the sleeves in two. Align the sides, stitch at 7mm and overcast or overlock the edges together. Turn inside out and insert sleeves into the arm holes with right sides together. Start by matching the side seam with the under sleeve and then the middle of the sleeve head with the shoulder seam. Stitch all around at 7mm, then overcast or overlock the edges. Make the hem of 1.5cm at the bottom of the sleeves. You can choose to make a single hem by folding back to 1.5cm, or a double hem by first making a fold to 5mm, then a second to 1cm. The jumpsuit slash playsuit can be made with an inseam button placket that makes it easier to dress and facilitate the nappy changing. However, for larger sizes this opening is not necessarily essential and you can decide not to do it. It will also allow you to save time on the realization of the garment, so for the option without inseam button placket, place with right sides together the front and back bottoms. Stitch the inseam at 7mm and overcast or overlock the edges together and also the bottom of the legs. Make a hem of 1.5cm and stitch it. If you want to elastic at the legs, then do not completely close the hem and insert an elastic. The size is given in the guidebook with a safety pin in the hem. Overlay the ends of the elastic over 1 cm and stitch to hold them together. It will only remain to close the hem. We will begin the assembly of the inseam buttoning. We will do it here on the trousers version, but the assembly is the same for the shorty version. Overcast or overlock the bottom of the legs and the largest fused length of the front gusset. Mark the front gusset middle. 
it will match with the crotch seam. Place with right sides together the front gusset with the front bottom inseam, the non-fused length aligned with the front inseam. Stitch the two small sides 1.5 cm from the bottom of the leg, along the fold of the hem. To be very precise, I prefer to mark with a pen the margin to respect. Stitch the smallest length at 7 mm from the inseam. Cut the two small sides of the gusset only, not the hem of the leg, to 7 mm, then cut the corners in bevel. It allows us to avoid unnecessary over thickness. If you don't want to put elastic on the legs, turn the gusset on the wrong side of the trousers or shorty. The hem will start forming at 1.5 cm. You just have to iron it and stitch it. You can then resume the video at the assembly of the back gusset. For the elasticated option, cut in half the elastic length given in the table on page 3. This elastic has to be bigger than your leg bottom. Mark with a pen on the elastics the measurement indicated in the table of the guidebook, without cutting the elastic for the moment. Pin the ends of the elastics to the wrong side of the front, one millimeter below the folding line of the hem. Sew the two ends by making points back and forth. Turn the front gusset on the wrong side of the garment. The hem is formed at the same time at 1,5 cm while catching the elastic inside. Iron the hem. and stitch it, being careful not to stitch the elastic, which must remain free in the hem. Pull on the elastic until you see the mark previously marked. Pin the elastic by aligning the mark and the back inseam. Sew the elastic in place by making points back and forth. Now. The back gusset. Fold in two in length with right sides together the back gusset and stitch its two small sides. Cut the corners. Turn inside out. And iron. Mark the back gusset middle. It will match with the crotch seam. Place with right sides together the back gusset with the back inseam by aligning the raw edges. Stitch at 7 mm and overcast or overlock the edges together. Fold the back gusset in the continuity of the back. As an option, to hold in place the gusset, top stitch the seam allowance on the back. The front gusset is positioned above the back gusset like this. Mark the position of the button holes, embroider them horizontally on the front gusset, and sew the buttons in vis-a-vis -vis on the back gusset. You can otherwise use snaps. We just have to make the button holes on the front or back bodice button placket. The first is horizontal, the others are vertical. The spacings between the buttons are given on the pattern. Just avoid placing them at the level of the bust plus bottom or skirt seam, it would be too thick. Sew the buttons in vis-a-vis, -vis, 
or put snaps. And here is your Madrid is over. We hope you enjoyed this video, and now it's up to you.